In this problem, we're going to consider the magnetic field due to a coaxial cable. So I'm going to draw a large picture. I'm going to have my inner current passing, coming out of the page. That's I1, and that's just a long, thin wire. Surrounding that current is rubber, usually, and then an outer conductor carrying current I2. And in this case, I'm going to have it going into the board in this outer conductor. So that will be I2. The inner radius of the outer conductor is A, and the outer radius is B. So we're trying to find the magnetic field both in the gap and inside the conductor, as well as outside the whole coaxial cable. So case A, we'll consider in the gap. So R less than A is in the gap. We'll draw our Ampian circle in that gap. It has radius R. And the magnetic field, using Ampere's law, is mu naught I1 over 2 pi R, because the amount of current threading through that Ampian circle is just I1. OK, now let's go inside this outer conductor. So for R greater than A but less than B, we're now inside this outer conductor, where there are magnetic field lines. But we're now only capturing a portion of I2 not all of I2, and we still have to count I1. So we need to figure out this portion of I2. I'm going to call it I2 in. Now, the current densities are uniform for both these conductors. So I can write that J is equal to current over area. If I were looking at the full outer conductor, that would be I2 over the area of that ring, which would be pi b squared minus pi a squared. So that's a constant, and that's the current density in that outer conductor. Now if I just want the red portion, this is the same ratio. So I2 over pi b squared minus pi a squared is also equal to the proportion of I that's in the red Amperian circle. But now the area of that Amperian circle has R for one radius and A for the inner. And so to get the proportion of I2 that's in that Amperian circle, it's equal to the total I2 times pi R squared minus pi A squared divided by pi B squared minus pi A squared. And I may as well get rid of all those pi's. So it's I2 the ratio of R squared minus A squared over B squared minus A squared. Okay, that's the portion of I2 that's in our Ampere in circle. So to get the magnetic field, we have to add both the contribution from I1 and I2. And notice that they're in opposite directions, so one of them has to be negative. I'll choose the, the red I2 in to be negative. So it's I in would be I1 minus I2 in, which is I2 times this ratio of radii squared. So that's I in, all that's I in on top. And then I still have over 2 pi r. And you can just leave the function like that. So that's the magnetic field in that outer conductor. OK, now let's go outside the whole coaxial cable. So for R greater than B, we have all of I1 and all of I2, but they are in opposite directions. So I in, in this case, will be the I1 minus I2. And then we just put that into Ampere's law. So we have mu naught I1 minus I2 over 2 pi R. Now. It'd be a little bit tricky to graph that because of this function inside the conductor. It's an odd looking function. But we can see that outside the conductor, the entire cable, that it acts like a long straight wire where it's the difference of the two currents. Now for usual coaxial cables, I1 actually equals I2, which means that the magnetic field outside is zero.